Hello and welcome to Walk the Tech Talk with me, Pranjal Sharma. Joining me now is Dr. Jayajit Bhattacharya, who is the President of Digital Economy Policy Research. Uh, Jayajit, thanks for being with us. One of the key uh, applications of Internet of Things, which itself is quite a wide uh, range of technologies coming together, is in smart cities. Um, and the big challenge India faces in rolling out technology for improving the status of cities is a policy and a regulatory structure. In your view, where are we and what, what are the issues that the policy makers should address to ensure that technology plays a very efficient and enabling role? You know, it just reminds me of uh, the comment uh, from uh, Sun Tzu in The Art of Warfare where he says if you have only strategy and no tactics, that will give you some partial success. But if you've got no strategy and only tactics, is the noise before a resounding failure. And I think that's perhaps where we are in terms of smart cities. Although we started off by having a holistic plan, and there were excellent plans that we put up by the cities. But as we moved further and we progressed on that plan, we started implementing them in, in, um, a, in a manner which is not really coherent in that sense. And why am I saying that is because foremost is the strategy and the governance and therefore the administration and therefore the empowerment of the leaders of the city. You may have smart people in the city who are supposed to be the chairman of the municipality or uh, the commissioner of the municipality, but if they're not empowered, they're not able to take the decisions and drive them through into the city, which makes it pointless to have the technology being forced into the city because you can't really make anything magnificent out of those technologies. Let me take a simple example to underline what I'm trying to say. If in the Indian cities we're trying to put up smart toilets and you charge one rupee or two rupees per usage of the toilet, given the Indian situation, people will use the, the walls of the toilet outside rather than use the toilet inside, which defeats the entire purpose and defeats the entire outcome that we're looking for for a clean, nice, smart city. So it's two important points you made. One is about empowerment of the officials, but second is also about uh, some kind of a structure so that there is there is planned approach to technology. Otherwise, you'll end up replicating the silos which exist in a, in a technological uh, world as well, which is, again, going to defeat the purpose. In a smart city, you have to look at sustainability, you have to look at intelligent transport system, energy management, Ultimately, the objective is to make the cities more livable. When you say empowerment, do you say that all these various urban local bodies should be housed or under a pyramidal structure where there is perhaps a CEO of the city, uh, what we see as mayor in other cities, but that mayor is very, very well empowered and he is the owner. So there is somebody accountable for the uh, health and efficiency of the city. Is that what uh, your center and the government are looking at? We want to look at that, but let's just look at what is the issue right now. Why are we saying that we need a strong mayor? If you look at, let's say, the capital city of India, which is Delhi, you've got four mayors, right? You cannot have a city with four mayors. And who reports to the mayors? Almost nobody reports to the mayor. So in typically most Indian cities, you've got the urban secretary who's responsible for the city. You've got a chairman or a commissioner of the municipality who's responsible for it. There's an urban development authority who also has a jurisdiction on that city. There is a luxury board which has got jurisdiction in the city. There is a water and sewage board which has got a separate jurisdiction in the city. None of them report into one penultimate um, uh, leader. But each of them are also trying to do their own tech-led uh, transformation. Absolutely. So somebody is saying that I'll do a free Wi-Fi or somebody will say I'll, I'll uh, digitize uh, the monitoring of toilets. Absolutely. But that's quite pointless. That's quite pointless and, and that's what we are driving at. That you just can't inject technology and believe that the city will suddenly become uh, a very livable city. So a key part of a city is actually design. We keep talking about city from the perspective of <clears throat> management and from the perspective of technology, right? And therefore we believe if we bring in some kind of a random management and some kind of a technology, suddenly the fusion of these two will make us have a very livable city. That's not going to happen. If you're building, let's say the metros, and at every station, we're not building in the pod-based transportation support, which is, in our case, essentially auto rickshaws, electric rickshaws. There's no parking for them. There's no way that they can come in and, in an orderly manner, evacuate the passengers from the from the metro station. So how, then we are how, creating a, a kiosk over there, right? And hence, we are not able to bring in the design aspects to a technology which is a metro technology. So what are the next steps? How do we get out of this uh, mess? 
as it were. Um, what do you advise business leaders and policy makers now? What's the best way to improve from where we are? So there are two uh, core issues that needs to be solved in a city. One is a sustainability issue, which is, I'm not saying environmental sustainability, but financial sustainability. And the second is operational sustainability. That even if you build things up, how do you make sure they work properly? And the two have to be integrated through a design intervention. Let me take the example of some of the Spanish cities where they have been designed for the, the older kind of transportation, which is four-wheel transportation and so on. Now with the electric kick scooters being brought in, which are strewn all over the place, is causing a huge problem because they're violating the pedestrian space, they're violating the space for the cars and so on. And therefore, the city now needs to be retrofitted to enable this kind of mobility. In the Indian cities, we never considered the Indian modes of transportation to be built in into the way the city has to be created or the Indian habits of how we live, how we celebrate our festivals, how we go around in our uh, daily um, chores and that has not been built into the city and therefore we need to design for the Indian way of living, for the Indian way of commute and the Indian way of mobility. Uh, final point uh, Jajit, how can existing chaotic Indian cities, how can we retrofit or design them? A quick uh, response from you on this. I think the, the primary issue is enforcement. Even if you put in a 10 rupee fine, enforcement mm. comes in. I think we have got very weak enforcement. Second, it comes as a shock that many of the enforcement officers do not even know what the rules are. Uh, they don't see anything wrong in a two-wheeler bike going uh, in the wrong zigzag direction. and Correct. not following a lane because for them a two-wheeler is not supposed to follow a lane. Okay. So, so I, I think at this point we'll have to summarize what you're saying is that for technology to succeed in making cities smart, uh, aid design is very important um, and that can be done both for new cities and for uh, for existing cities by improving enforcement uh, and perhaps the governance and uh, decision making structure should be such that uh, the bodies and the individual responsible can therefore ensure that technology does deliver the objective that it's been installed for. Absolutely and I'll add to what you're saying Pranjal is that from there the city should not just be a smart city but should move towards being a cognitive city. It should learn and it should then be able to service its citizens in a proactive manner. And I think that's what we should be aiming for, which is very, very doable, and it's not futuristic. Thank you, Jaiji. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Pranjal.